All right, for reaction now, we're bringing in Mississippi Congressman Stephen Palazzo. Congressman Palazzo, thank you so much for coming on National Report. We do appreciate that. So here we have- Thank these, you for having me. Absolutely, here we have these new numbers, as you just seen. Economists predicted at 8.1%. It was actually 8.3% for the month of April. Bottom line, still a 40-year high, and that's where we are today. And as you know, President Biden spoke yesterday, trying to get ahead of these numbers, <clears throat> knowing it's gonna be high. I wanna show you this exchange really quickly and then get your response. Here's that. Mr. President, a year ago, the administration was saying that inflation was transitory. That's obviously not the case now. How long do you think it will be until we see prices coming down? I'm not going to predict that. It ranges depending on which economists you're talking to by the end of this year, and some say it's going to be, it's going to increase next year. But there's others say by the end of this year, you're going to see it come down by the calendar year. I don't know, but I know what we have to do to make sure that we can bring it down. Congressman, your thoughts? The president of the United States does not know, but he knows it needs to come down. Yeah, so something we say in the South is bless your heart. And so um, bless your heart, President Biden. I, I don't think he has a clue on what's happened domestically or foreign or in our military terms in Ukraine. Um, but he's heavily engaged in the blame game. Uh, and, you know, but if he wants to blame Republicans for, uh, you know, us having the hottest economy in our nation's history, record job creation, record unemployment, uh, a secure border, a strong military, uh, he always has a tendency to, to blame us. And it's like, hey, we, we, I will take that blame on my shoulders right now. But if the president uh, truly wants to attack inflation, he needs to unleash American energy resources. Drill here, drill now. Before this president took office, gasoline was $1.70 a gallon in Mississippi, and now it's over $4. But not just uh, unleash American energy and energy independence, but keep taxes low, keep regulations at a minimum, stop paying people to, to stay at home. Uh, and small businesses are competing with the, our own government for resources, but we're paying them to stay at home and sit on their couches. And, uh, you know, finally, I'd say a rep elect a Republican Congress in November and we, we can truly uh, tackle this inflation crisis. What did the president mean, in your opinion, by um, late? What he did dish out yesterday was blame. That is something that we've seen. Blame uh, on inflation, on COVID and Putin. But also, sir, your party, Republicans, he even named ultra MAGA. What does he mean by that? And how did that sit with you? I, it, does, it doesn't sit well with me, but I don't think it sits well with the majority of the American people. Even Democrats know that um, this president is way outside his scope of serving as president. I mean, he's been a, a failure on the foreign policy front for 42 years. And why would we expect him to do any better on domestic policy? And he's saying a tackle on inflation is his number one priority. Well, his number one priority should be the security and safety of this nation. It should begin with securing our southern border, which is a war zone, um, and, it's, and it's, it's basically a man-made disaster, and he's complicit in uh, the cartel controlling our southern border and not the U.S. government. You mentioned protecting the southern border, obviously tackling inflation, yet at the same time, uh, the House, as you know, and, and you're a part of as well, uh, passed the $40 billion aid package. It's awaiting President Biden's signature this morning, again, an aid package for Ukraine, um, and that was overwhelmingly passed uh, last night. $40 billion is a lot of money, um, and there is no, when you talk to any military official, they're not sure there's an end in sight or when this war would end. And everyday American is concerned that Congress, that the government continues to spend when we see inflation out of control. Granted, the want or need to help Ukraine is there, sure. Um, but one, how do you explain to the American people of so much sin, uh, spending of money and when would that end? Where's the timeline on it? Also, do you know how that money's being sent? Is a check being written to Ukraine and then you move on? How, as you, a congressman, how do you account for the money being spent by Ukraine once it is sent over? You know, that, that's a great question. And I have to say, there seems to be a pattern where Russia likes to invade Ukraine when we have Democrats uh, in the White House. It first started uh, with Obama with the invasion and annexation of Crimea. Uh, and then in 2022, after our disaster with withdrawal, which was this president's doing, 
uh, I believe, triggered uh, not only China, but Russia and other rogue nations to see a, a fundamental weakness uh, in this commander in chief. And, you know, the fact that we passed a bill last night, which now it's going to provide $24 billion in military assistance. It's going to replenish our stockpile, which is precariously low. And it's also going to provide humanitarian aid. Um, and so what, the, the, what really um, ruffles my feathers is if we would have just provided the lethal uh, aid and American leadership, I think that would have deterred Russia from the get go. And we would not even be having this conversation today. And again, it's just we have a weak commander in chief. Uh, he's wrong on foreign policy. He did not lead from the front and we did not provide aid uh, when they requested it. I was in Ukraine last May. This is not a surprise buildup. But, you know, and I, last May when I was in Ukraine, we abandoned Afghanistan. And so our, our generals, this administration, they were well aware that the Russians have been building up. Uh, not just in Belarus, but also along the Russian-Ukrainian border. But yet this administration did nothing. And I think you've got to lead by example on the world stage. And if we would have provided the lethal aid and the leadership that Ukraine needed, again, I don't think we would have voted on a $40 billion package last night. And when you, when you, you mentioned the term lethal aid, you're possibly mentioning uh, the, the Polish MiGs. Is that correct, of getting those over? Uh, yeah anything and everything that would have been used to protect Ukraine. And, you know, and I, I feel like as long as the Ukrainians are fighting uh, for their nation, for their sovereignty and for their freedoms, America needs to have a role. Um, you know, it just, it, the thing is, is Russia is a bad country and we need to continue providing the equipment uh, that the Ukrainians need to protect their families and their sovereignty. Uh, so I think it's a, a good investment. Hopefully this will, end very soon. No one has a prediction and maybe we won't end up spending all $40 billion. Congressman Stephen Palazzo of Mississippi, good to see you, Congressman. Thank you for your time, sir. Same here. Thank you.